Hello there and welcome to this video where we have some really exciting news for Luminar Neo users. Skylum has announced the much awaited Panorama Stitching extension which has been included in their professional extensions lineup. Our team at Clever Photographer was given early access to the beta version of this extension and in this video we will cover all the details about this incredible feature. Of course that the innovative software like Luminar Neo offers more than just a simple panorama stitching. With this new extension you can effortlessly stitch your RAW and JPEG files together to create seamless panoramic photos that beautifully showcase landscape and cityscape scenes. In addition, you can easily create HDR panoramas by combining multiple exposures and pano brackets directly in the panorama stitching extension resulting in single HDR panorama that preserves every detail. Now on to the exciting features. You can create panorama images from videos. Yes, you heard me right. You can leverage the power of motion to create powerful panorama images from your videos. But that's not all. The video panorama offers another feature that allows you to take your creative vision to the next level by selecting specific subjects within a video and converting them into panoramic images. The extension intelligently isolates and combines frames centered around the chosen element resulting in visually striking panoramas that highlight your subject in a fascinating way. Before we look at the tool, let me tell you some additional information. The extension will be released on July 20th as a part of the scheduled software update. It will be available to the monthly and annual subscribers of the Pro and Ultimate plans along with all the other extensions. Luminar Neo owners with a lifetime license can purchase the Panorama Stitching extension individually or transition to one of the subscription plans if they desire. Now if you want to purchase the extension individually, you can use the link in the description of the video to do that. The individual extension will be for sale for $39 until the 20th of July. After that, when the extension will be released, the price will go up to $49. So this is out of the way and now let's dive into the application and take a closer look at the Panorama Stitching extension. As we are currently working with the beta version of the extension, our capabilities are a little bit limited. However, don't worry, we have a full series coming up next week that will cover everything you need to know about panorama photography and the new panorama stitching extension in Luminar Neo. Just before we going to continue, I want to quickly mention that this tutorial is powered by our brand new Luminar Neo Summer Bundle. It includes over 780 new summer elements to power up your favorite tools in Luminar Neo. For a little fee, you will get extra high definition skies, overlays, textures, backgrounds, frames, LUTs, presets and so much more. Find out more about it on our website levelphotographer.com and to get the best possible price, follow the link in the description of this video. Ok, so as you can see, we are in Luminar Neo, we are in the catalog module and this is where you're going to find your panorama stitching extension. It's in the same place as the HDR merge, focus stacking and upscale extension. Once you install it, it will appear at the bottom and just like the rest of the extensions, you can simply hide it or unhide it just by clicking on it. So it's right here ready for us to be used, so let's start right away. The first thing I want to show you is how to create a simple panorama using five different images. 
we have them already ready here. So all we need to do is to use Command or Control A, and now we can just drag and drop them onto the extension. Once we hover over it, you will see the blue frame with the plus sign on it. So now just let go and they will appear into this little preview area. Now when I hover over them, I can remove them if I want to with the use of the little circle with the cross, or I can scroll through the images by using the little arrows on either side. Before we're going to start stitching the panorama, we can also have a look at the additional settings by using the little button with a circle and three dots on it. When we click on it, a new window will open and here you have additional settings like lens correction, chromatic aberration reduction, ghost reduction and so on. Additionally, you can also remove all the images by clicking on the remove all files button. Once we finish here, we can just click anywhere else and if we are ready, we can now click on the start. By doing that, it will open a panorama stitching window where we're going to continue. On this first window, you will be able to zoom in and out, rotate the image, and then also transform it to get the best possible result. To transform it, you can use the rotation, and you can also drag the image following this little cross on your screen again to get the best possible result and to make it as straight as possible. In the final version of the extension, you will also be able to click on the little grey drop-down box here and select a different ways of how the panorama is showcased. For now we're gonna leave that, let's say that we're quite happy with the image and we can click on continue. In this window you will be able to crop the image. We can do that very quickly, let's just use the little handles. Um, let's adjust it here on the sides and also from the top. And here just a quick note that in the final version of the extension there should be also the option of auto cropping. Once we're happy with the crop, we can click on the crop button and that will bring us to the final window where we can double check the result and once we're happy we just click on save. Now the application will process the images, stitch them together and prepare the final stitched result. When it's finished, the new image will be placed into the panorama stitching folder that will appear in your folders area and you can see it right here. So let's click on it and let's just use the spacebar to see the full version of the image. I think the result is quite good. As you saw earlier, it's in TIFF format. So now what you would do, you would take the image, bring it in the edit module and start the editing. Now moving to the example number two, where I'm gonna show you how to create a panorama from a video. Now I have an example video here I have recorded in London over the weekend, so let's just take it and drag and drop it on our panorama stitching extension. Once it's there, you will see it as a preview with the little video icon in the bottom left corner. There is not much we can adjust in a setting itself, so all we need to do is just to click on start. Once we do that, you will see that the video will appear. You will also have the classic video controls here. You can just click on play and basically it will show you what is in the actual video. This is a view from the Westminster Bridge with the London Eye, some of the bridges and ships. So once we're happy, we just pause this, go on the beginning of the timeline, and now we have the opportunity to adjust where we want the panorama to start. So we are looking at the screen, I quite like this building, but I think there is way too much of it. So let's just click on a timeline, move around, and I think somewhere around here is right. So we're going to take the little handle at the beginning of the timeline and we just drag it there. Once we're happy with the beginning of the panorama, we can focus on the end. So let's again click on the timeline. I think this is maybe a little bit too far, so let's go back even a little bit more. And I think somewhere around here is fine. So somewhere here, again, we take the little handle and just bring it down here. Once we adjust the beginning and end of the timeline, we can now click on continue. Once the preview is ready, you will be able to zoom in 
and out and then use your mouse to rotate it and then also move it around to make sure that it's as straight as possible. Once you're happy with the result, we can continue. But once again, just like in a photography version of the panorama stitching, in future you will be able to click on a grey drop-down box and adjust the different ways the panorama is projected. For this time being, we're gonna leave that alone and we're gonna click on continue. On this screen, we will be able to crop the image before stitching it together. We can use the little handles just to make sure that we have image everywhere, just adjust it here and there, and once we're happy and ready, we can just click on the crop. Once we do that, we will be showcased the final result, and when we're happy with the result, we can click on save and let the application to process the image and show us the final result. Once the image is ready, it will be placed into the panorama stitching folder in your folder section and here you can basically have a look at the result and then simply take it into the edit module and continue with editing. And finally, in this third example, I'm going to show you how to use the selective object panorama. For this, we're going to need one more video, so let's take it and drag and drop it onto the panorama extension. Once it's there, we can right away click on start. Similarly to the video panorama, we have a timeline and we also have the basic video controls. So let's have a look at the video itself. It's basically a lady walking on the street, passing through the different buildings and flowers. So this will work very well for us. So let's go on the beginning of the timeline. And this time we're going to click on this little switch saying custom object composition. So let's do that. Let's just switch it on. And once we do that, you will notice that we get another timeline with a little plus sign on it. So let's click on it. And now we have this little square. Now we can move it around and the controls are very similar to the cropping. And we can basically just make sure that we select the woman itself. So. Let's just position it around her, something like this. And once we're happy, we can continue. Now let's move with our timeline, I think somewhere around here. And once we on the position we like, we can again click on the plus sign and again position the little square around the subject, just like in the first example. So let's just adjust it make sure the person is in the frame itself and that's about it for this one. Now we can crop the actual clip so let's just take this little end of the clip and drag it towards our point here and now what we want to do we want to click somewhere in the middle of the selected timeline so somewhere around here and just add one more point. To do this again we're gonna click on a plus sign again position our square Make sure that it's nicely selecting the person. And once we are happy with it, all we need to do is to click on continue. Now the application will process the image and prepare the preview. Once the preview is ready, we can now zoom in and have a look at the result. And by looking at it, you can now see what we did. So now we have a uh, three examples of the woman walking. Of course that we could do so much more. We could have selected another frame to have her here and again here and maybe even earlier. So this is a lots of fun. However, coming back to this window, just like in all the other examples, now we can basically rotate the image around and we can also drag it around to make sure that the image itself is straight. Once we're happy here and adjust it into the way we like, we can again click on continue. And just like with all the other examples, we can now crop it around to make sure that everything is the way we like. So let's really crop it tight towards her and get a result, maybe something like this. And once we're happy, just hit crop. In this window, we can one more time check the result. And if we're happy, we just click on save. Just like with the other examples, once the panorama is ready, it will be placed into the panorama stitching folder in the folder section and when it's available, we can now have a look at the result. 
Now, as always, you could take this image into the edit module and continue editing there. However, I hope that this gives you a good example what is the selective subject about and what you can do with it. Now, before we're going to finish, I want to quickly remind you to subscribe to our channel and make sure that you keep an eye on it over the following days. We have a full series coming on our channel covering everything you need to know about the panorama stitching extension in Luminar Neo. It will be lots of fun, so make sure that you keep an eye on all the upcoming videos. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cleverphotographer.com slash luminargift. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.